over the white crystal dover. Good grief. Oh, you know how to affect a man's heart, don't you? <laughs> I don't think I could have been one of those guys. The idea to think that you are heading for the guys who are going to shoot you down. So, David Jason, mm. welcome to British Forces News. Um, you, you did the real thing there, didn't you, or as near as you can get. What was it like? Well, I think that most... Uh well, most people, most men anyway, who, <coughs> excuse me, most men who uh, are of a certain age and pilots in particular will be uh, going quite green of jealousy, I mean, mm. at that. Yeah, the um, experience to fly one of those uh, sophisticated machines for that period, it's the fastest sports car of the, uh, of the skies. It was then. And that was quite a significant plane itself, wasn't it? Yeah. The first one to shoot down a German, was it? Uh, no, it, uh, it saw uh, enemy action and it shot down the aircraft on D-Day. Mm. And it, I don't think that one was in, in the Battle of Britain. Mm. But it had 300 hours, I think it was, in, uh, on duty during the war. So it um, was rebuilt. It was a rebuild and uh, they put in a second cockpit. And, uh, what did you set out to do with this documentary? Well, I think that um, it's been well known really for a long time that I've got a great fascination with the air and flying and uh, with the RAF I have a great identity with them. I'm a, um, a member of the, the Benevolent Fund, etc. And here you are getting, getting your hands dirty. Yeah. So learning how to do it. That is, look, <laughs> stick it, he made me stick my finger in there because that's <laughs> part of what they had to do to make sure that it was full of oil. Mm. So tell us a bit more about the kind of people you met during the filming of this documentary. Well, I, I was intrigued by the fact that I, I met actually three or four of the, uh, the few, the actual guys who actually fought. And uh, one of them had, had brought down, I think, seven German aircraft. He was, a, you know, he was one of the famous ones. And um, it was more, though, than my uh, idea with the programme was more than just to meet the pilots and the heroism of the pilots, which is gone documented many times. It was how it came together and all of the people who were involved in bringing together the whole operation of the Battle of Britain and how many people, how difficult and diverse they were, that were brought together in, in order for the pilots to succeed in their job. Tell us about Bill Green. <laughs> Bill, he's wonderful, Bill. He was such, a, such an amusing, amazing character. And um, he told me this wonderful story that's in the, in the, in the, uh, in the show. That uh, we found his, um, I think it was a hurricane that he was flying. We found the bits of that. But he... Because uh, he was shot down, wasn't he? He was shot down. But well, he bailed out, and um, his parachute candled. Uh, he was, I think, it was something like eighteen thousand feet, and he doesn't remember until about three thousand feet when he came to and realised that his parachute hadn't opened, and thought was trying to work out what it was, uh, what he was going to do, and suddenly, by a miracle, it uh, it it opened. And you took him back to the spot where yeah. it all happened. Yeah. And the strange thing about that, or the interesting thing about that, <clears throat> when we think about the, the country and how much it's changed and everything, he took me back to the exact same spot. And I said, how did you know that this was the spot where you landed? And he said, well, you see that, that um, pylon, electricity pylon. So I said, yeah. He said, that was the one that when I came to, to he said, I could just... I remember just seeing the top of this pylon passing through his eyes, he said, mm. before he hit the deck. But the interesting thing was he said that today the landscape has not changed wow. one bit. Wow. Which is fascinating. So you, you explored history in that documentary, yeah. but on the same day we're going to see you uh, in, acting in a drama which is a kind of black comedy. Tell us about Albert's Memorial and what that's about. Well, yeah, it, it, it was odd, really, that... Um, the documentary that I made was to go out to celebrate the 70 years of the Battle of Britain. But I'd made uh, Albert's Memorial and uh, they put it on the shelf for reasons which we don't go into, probably financial. Mm -hmm. um, and they didn't have a, uh, they, they said they didn't have a spot for it, but when they knew I was doing the uh, Battle of Britain, they thought this was an ideal opportunity to put them together because 
The show uh, Albus Memorial is about two old codgers that went through the war as foot soldiers. Mm. Let's have a look a little bit from it. Okay. Makes you think, doesn't it? So, quite a poignant moment there, but there's a lot of comedy in it. Just tell us that there's a coffin there on the top of a taxi, yeah? Uh, so, from the sublime to the ridiculous. Yeah. What, so, what are they doing exactly? What's the story? Well, you know, you don't want to give too much away, do you, really? You, you, nah, you that want to spoil it. You spoil it. it. We yeah. give an idea, you can't go on. you? <laughs> you watch the <this> show. <laughs> no, I'm not telling you, really. Um, but as you can see, let me say this, that you've just seen, you've seen that clip of the, mm. the, the coffin and it is about three old boys, one dies and he wants to, he forces his mates to mm. take him back to where he most remembers the time where he was most alive and that's an area of Germany where these young fellas were fighting the war and so they, like Wallies, they decide <laughs> to take him back and that, hence the coffin on the top of the taxi. So it's all rather silly, but it does have... Uh, it's, a, it's a very emotional story as well. Yeah, well, you've been through it a bit, I suppose, on both programmes. Uh, bring it up to date. Um, how do you... I mean, that, that's all about the Second World War, and how do you feel about the force today? What kind of thoughts do you have for them? Well, you know, the, I don't think it, one's attitude has changed very much. The... You are. We probably got some of the finest, if not the finest, uh, fighting force in the world. And though I personally would have to say that I think all of us we hate war. We don't. We don't really want war. But in order to say keep the peace, if you like, and to keep our way of life, we need our fighting forces to be up there doing a job that we wouldn't want to do, um, but they do for us so so well and so powerfully and it's so important that I have and always have had the greatest respect uh, for our boys and girls who are out there doing a job that is really difficult. I'm sure they'll be glad to hear that. So David Jason, good to meet you. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure.